Thanks for joining us. Uh, in this episode, we're going to be talking to uh, Nate Raw with the USDA, and we're going to talk about all the programs that um, you can use to improve habitat and improve your land. So stay with us. Hi, this is Tim and Dole. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses, a podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and, and being a steward of the land. Hey, if you like what these two dumbasses are doing, please hit the like button and subscribe today. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. We have Nate Raw here yep. from the USDA. Welcome, Nate. Uh, really glad to have you here with our show. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to talk stuff and talk programs and everything else. We have a multitude of uh, topics to talk about today, so let's get into it. Um, I'm going to kick it kick it off. Is is uh, so uh, USDA? What yeah. is it? Yeah, USDA. Uh, so. U.S. Department of Agriculture, obviously by definition, and that kind of encompasses a lot, I guess, if you really look at all the different agencies that USDA covers. And uh, for us here, what our applicability is I'm with uh, Natural Resources Conservation Service, and they typically work with farming uh, community folks, uh, landowners, producers, stuff like that, um, but not limited to, and, uh, you know, folks like you that are into wildlife and into hunting and stuff like that we work with you as well uh, we also have the farm service agency which is uh, our sister agency shall we say they work out of our county offices as well and sometimes we'll have another offices like uh, rd rural development and a few of them have rma which is a risk management agency stuff like that there's also forest service obviously is a big one most people know forest service and they we don't really have an active forest service uh area here in iowa uh, because we don't have actually a national forest in iowa i think we're the only state that doesn't have a national forest really? wow yeah. kind of interesting sad, but yeah actually. but we do have stevens state forest down here which is nice and i think that was possibly going to be a national forest but i don't know why it didn't pan out oh, so interesting but yeah so it's kind of, yeah, a little bit of everything all over the board when you talk about USDA. And if we take that question to the ne you know, next mm -hmm. level is, so then what, what's kind of the purpose? What's the intent? Why, do, why does yeah. this organization exist? Yeah, so NRCS itself was born out of the Dust Bowl. And so it was created during you know, the Depression years when they were seeing out west that, okay, we were doing all these extensive farming practices, you know, really hard tilling and stuff like that out west. And then we started to see the big dust storms because of all that intensive farming practices on the, on the prairie lands. And so out of that catastrophe, shall we, shall we call it, uh, they created the Soil Erosion Service uh, in, I believe, 1934. And then that short, shortly after they changed it to the Soil Conservation Service. And that was really our big mission, was to uh, preserve the soils that were being lost, mainly through the, the Dust Bowl, but elsewhere, you know, areas around here, a lot of gully erosion, where they were cutting down areas that were as prime farmland and they were more hilly. And so lots of farming caused you know, big gully erosion issues. And so out of that, we worked with producers, farmers to correct that, either through putting in structures, say terraces, basins, ponds, or, okay, how can we change your farming techniques to actually preserve the soil that you're farming, uh, either through contour farming or, say, you're going to put in um, some no-till practices where you're, you're going to take the tillage out of your uh, system. So that's kind of our bread and butter where we started from with the agency. And then in the 90s, we had a name change to NRCS. And that name change was brought about because the agency, as we were growing, as we started to see, okay, we're starting to help more than just the soil conservation folks. We're getting more of these wildlife type people or even urban people uh, that we work with. And so they changed to NRCS and we've kind of gone from there. So USDA is part of NRCS? 
It would be the opposite. NRCS is part of USDA. Okay. Yeah, we are an agency under the USDA umbrella. Okay. And so then when we when I go into the office, mm -hmm. right? So left side is <laughs> NRCS, right? It's the USDA. The opposite in in Albia. Yep, we're right side uh, NRCS office, and then its left side is the Farm Service Agency. So what's the difference between those two? Yeah, the, the difference is uh, Farm Service is more of a programs um, type of agency where they're into like what used to be direct payments. Are they the money side of the business? And then sort, of, sort of, kind of, but yeah, so they're more of the programs and we're more of the technical agency. So we're the ones who actually have the, the science and the technology, uh, the technical staff that say, okay, I have something going on on my farm. This is what I need to fix it. Okay. Interesting. I mean, cause you go in, I mean, when I go in, it ta it's taken me a while to kind of figure it out is, is okay. hey, when I go to program sign up, mm -hmm. I deal with the farm service mm -hmm. group. But then once I'm in the program, I never talk to them again. And <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. You got to go to the right I side. I got to go to the other side. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep. But as a new person, it took me a while to figure that out. I mean, nobody was like kind of carrying. I mean, super nice people. Don't get me wrong. Right. But nobody was like holding your hand through the process. No, no. I, yeah. As a first time person, it's a little bit daunting to, oh, well, I need to sign all these papers over here with uh, FSA just to get into the programs, register my farm and everything else. And then it's like, well, I'm interested in this. Well, no, you need to go over and talk to them over across the hall or over across the counter. And so, yeah, the first few times you're in there, it's a little bit daunting to be like, well, where, which side am I supposed to be going to? Um, and they got to see yeah. it all over my face oh, yeah, when I'm yeah. walking. <laughs> They're like, no, nope, he's a newbie. <laughs> <laughs> he's clueless. <laughs> Look at this one coming in. Yeah. He is yeah. a total dumbass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> funny, funny. Yeah. Hey, Nate, not, I know we're getting, you know, we could go a lot. This oh, could be, yeah. It's a big yep. spider web here, right? Oh, yeah. So it definitely is. If we could, um, we're going to try to focus on more of, uh, you know, landowners, developing mm -hmm. habitat, yep. hunting, food plots, um, those type of things. Yep. Um, in general, and right. I know there's a hundred examples here, but yeah. could you give three, four, five examples right. of you know, what your service could provide for the folks watching this, you know, episode and, right. and really probably very applicable to Tim and I. Yeah. So, you know, you guys are looking at more of the wildlife habitat stuff, like you said, and that can be kind of a lot of different things. Uh, obviously you guys have heard about CRP and we didn't talk about it much yet, but there's CRP that's available through FSA. And we do technical work with that. That's one program. Um, say Equip is another program that we work with. That is uh, NRCS's more bread and butter program. And that can encompass a lot of different stuff. And wildlife is one thing that we can work with with that as well. Uh, the CSP program is something else that we work with with customers. And that's more of a long-term type program. Uh, kind of similar to CRP in that case, because CRP is a 10-year program. But that one is a lot more intensive, I would say. We're, we're looking at a whole operation. So maybe for guys like you, if you only own a, uh, one farm and, it, and it's timberland and stuff like that, it's not as big of a deal. Um, but versus a farming guy who has 10 farms that he farms, well, I got to look at each one of those farms for CSP. That, that gets to be a little bit of a bigger program that you're working with. And then we have like the RCPP program, which is a little bit new, uh, which some uh, habitat organizations will come in and say, hey, I want to have this special project that we want to work on for pheasants or for quail. And so then we'll, okay, we have the special project and people that are interested, okay, we'll focus in on those, those special uh, concerns. And then we have kind of some of the state programs as well that we can work with. Uh, the REAP program, which is a big one that we do quite a bit of wildlife stuff with. And then like the IFIP program is more of the traditional soil erosion type practices, terraces, basins, ponds, stuff like that. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, so it sounds like that, you know, if I'm going to do something on my farm and that's mm -hmm. my mentality. Yep. Is I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 you know, I've got 
X acres here and it, yep. it's not really producing any product. It's mm -hmm. all habitat, farmland, yep. Yep. And recreational kind of land. But it sounds like if I was thinking about doing something with my timber, mm -hmm. I better talk with you guys and see what oh, options yes. are available. Yeah, right? definitely, definitely. And if I feel like I'm going to plant something somewhat permanent, mm -hmm. prairie grass or habitat or whatever, again, mm -hmm. it might be worth talking mm -hmm. to you folks to see what's available. Yeah, definitely. Because okay. each one of the programs, depending on what you're signing up with, has some potential for some cost share, shall we call it. Uh, financial assistance is probably more appropriate. I, I, can't, I don't want to say cost share because then people say, well, it's a, uh, I'm going to get 50% or I'm going to get 75%. Um, NRCS has kind of gone away from that. Everything that we work with programs wise is a uh, flat rate. So whatever it costs you, you're going to still get the same amount from NRCS for that payment rate. And so, yeah, if you have something that you're working on that you're saying, okay, I want to do a tree planting and I know that I'm wanting to do it six months out or whatever, you're going to come and talk to us at the office and say, Hey, what programs do I fit into? Say, I'll look at it and I'll go, well, it might fit really well for equip, or maybe I can say, okay, maybe you're doing something a little bit more intensive and you're, you're wanting to do something more long-term. Maybe we'll try to go for CSP. It's just trying to see what you're wanting to do and how does it fit into the programs. And we definitely want to get into the office as quick as possible. Cause sometimes, uh, depending on what you're wanting to do, it might take a little bit more to plan than just the, Hey, I'm going to do this, put it on a map and good, good to go. <laughs> just depends on what you're wanting to do, especially some of the forestry stuff, because we got to get Jeremy Cochran involved, you know, or the district foresters per sure. se, and get them out to say, Hey, <clears throat> this is what they have. This is what practices they actually need. Yeah. Yeah, maybe this is a good transition to pivot. Mm -hmm. Like that word, Tim. I do. <laughs> to, to, to pivot, pivot into, move, uh, yeah. you know, there's there's a cycle, right? There's a yeah. cycle to most of these programs. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, maybe it's a good opportunity to talk through that cycle because yep. that was a big <laughs> learning. I'm sure you had even yeah. a bigger learning with your CRP and CP stuff. Yeah, it, it, it does be confusing. You go in and want yep. to do something tomorrow, it's not going to happen. Right. 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 Exactly. What's open, what's not. So like CRP, just for mention, that, that's one that most people know about. So there's kind of two programs within CRP. There's the continuous enrollment that's open all the time. So if you have, and this is a specific for cropland, so it doesn't, so if you're non-cropland, this doesn't apply. But if you have an area that you're say, you're in a floodplain and you have uh, just flooding issues and stuff like that, and you're like, well, I'm, I don't want to crop this anymore. You might uh, try to enroll it into the wetland program. And then that's open year round. The, it's more of the water quality type practices that are open year round. Uh, a couple of the wildlife ones like pollinator habitat and uh, the it's habitat buffers. I want to say quail buffers, but it's the habitat buffers. Uh, those are open year round. And those are easy anytime. I'm interested as long as it qualifies we can get you in then there's the general sign up and that's the one that most people hear about okay the hey there's a CRP sign up well technically there's always a CRP sign up with the continuous sign up but then there's the general sign up so that one is the more traditional CRP where you're taking big fields and not necessarily priority areas or water quality areas. And you're saying, okay, I don't want to farm this anymore. Or it's just an area that I want to try to get habitat on. And I'm going to put it into the general signup. And that's a point system. So they're going to say, okay, I'm going to do this. Say I'm going to do a native grass practice, CP2. Mm -hmm. I'll throw that out there. And they're going to say it's, it's how many points you get. And then they send it to the national office and the secretary of agriculture goes in there and says, okay, we have this many acres open, this much dollar available. And these are the people that get in and then based on points, based on points and it's nationwide. And so you're going to get against everybody in the nation. When you're talking about some of our programs, say like equip CSP, they're similar ish as far as ranking. So, and timelines. We have changed that recently that we have a 
batching period that is going to be set for every year. So equip and CSP and even RCPP, I think moving forward is all going to be set at October 1st. You have to have an application by that date to be considered for the first ranking cutoff. That being said, we have an open enrollment at any time. So you can technically come in and sign up for EQIP or CSP or any of those programs at any time. But if you don't get in by that batching period date, we, we can't rank it, you know, until we're within those dates. So if we run it, so I'm super interested in this, by the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So as uh, we start to go, go <laughs> years are turning, right? <laughs> so as we start to go through this process, it's... Yeah. It's uh, March right now. Yeah. In order to make the first ranking, and it won't, if we went in and signed up for something today, mm -hmm. it, nothing would happen to it until after 10 1. Is that what I'm hearing? Right. Yeah. So that's, that, that's the that's fun that's part. Right. Yeah. See, that's <laughs> the part that you need to remember is okay, when do I need to be up to be considered for first round? And that that's going to be October 1st. They've set that as a hard date. In the past, it kind of moved around a little bit. And I think they finally said, for ease of the customer and even for us, let's just set it for October 1st. And that's going to be nice moving forward. You're going to know, okay, if I'm wanting to be considered for the first round of equip, I better get something in here by that October 1st date. Um, so it's open year round. Uh, so then first round ranking, typically we're talking about January for that first round batching period. And then we may be funding February and into March a little bit. I think right now we have a, our current ones that got picked, selected, uh, have to be obligated in contract by March 25th. That date kind of moves around year to year. Sure, sure. Right. Um, but then after that, we may have a second sign up. We may not. It depends on how much money we use that first round. It'd be really slick. I know this doesn't exist, but it would be really <laughs> slick. Like let, so I have a uh, an area on our property, mm -hmm. and that hey, I could go in and regardless of the program, because I know right. this is going to be true for all of them. Right. It'd be nice if I said, hey, I've got this one area. I want to do some habitat buffers. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's over a five acre parcel. Right. And I could put in those buffers. I know this is this. I could go in and talk to them. I know there's no guarantees that I'm going to be. Uh, that I'm going to meet the point criteria, but I could go ahead and do it on like this spring mm -hmm. and get everything laid out. Mm -hmm. They could come back in and then says, Hey, we're going to fund you. You met from a points perspective, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, it's right. covered. Yep. Yeah. But, and we'd be interacting the whole time. <laughs> right. But yeah. versus trying to hit this deadline and I'm not going to do anything <laughs> right. until it really right. is a two year process. It is. Right? It, really it really is. is. Two yeah. Cycle. At, at bare minimum one. But yeah, sometimes yeah. it might take you two once you really think about it. I'm going to start talking about it this summer. You know, oh, I really want to do this. I better get signed up. Then you're going to get ranked and everything once you've signed up. And it's going to be really starting that next year. Obviously, you're into year two. And the realistically of, okay, now I'm going to start putting it on the ground. Yeah, you're probably talking year two of before you're actually putting boots on the ground, putting stuff in the ground. I mean, that's yeah. probably the that's probably the <laughs> biggest con why I don't use the program. Yeah, because I because I just want to get going. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Right. And yep. And I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> yep. I, I get it. Yeah. No, that that's kind of a downfall a little bit of more of the NRCS type programs is just that turnaround time. It it takes so much longer to get stuff into contract than say like the state programs that actually are a little bit easier, say the REAP or the IFIP programs, because it's um, at least for REAP, which is specifically for the habitat type programs. That one's, as long as there's money available, it's kind of open anytime. And it's like, I want to do habitat here. Okay. There's money available. We're going to get it approved and then we're going to get it approved by the commissioners. It's, kind it's of a totally a different deal. And it's a first come, first as serve. As you qualify. Yeah, exactly. And they and right now it's set up that each county gets its own divvy of money or pot of money that they say, okay, you get this until you run out. So people just come in the door and until you run out, you're funding people. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I know we're going to dive deep into in a couple of these programs um, yeah. in some additional episodes, but um, 
Tim, any other questions before we? No, this really, this is very helpful. Yeah. And uh, uh, this answered everything I needed for to, for this this section here. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Nate, if, if, you're, if people, one of our listeners is out yeah. there, I mean, what advice would you give them? Again, not knowing... Right. Not knowing anything, and we, you know, I think we're a pretty good example of that, even though we've <laughs> dipped our toes in right. this a little bit. Yeah. What advice would you give them? Where would where should they start? How would they go about it? Yeah, I I would say if you're interested at it at all, you know, you're just kind of thinking about it. There's a lot of information out there on the internet. Obviously, USDA.gov. You know, go type in NRCS Iowa. And you'll bring it to our homepage and you can start going through their programs. I'm interested in Equip or whatever. And just kind of read about the different programs that we offer. Um, but if you're like, you know, a little bit more serious, got some more ideas, call the office. Say, hey, I'm interested in this. You know, what do you guys offer? And we can definitely talk it through and say, okay, yeah, you're wanting to do Habitat, you fit best under these programs. Or, you know, you're wanting to do forestry Habitat stuff, okay, you fit best under this. Or I want to do terrorist work, well, you're going to fit best under the state program or, or, you know, federal program. It's just trying to figure out what do you want to do and definitely know what you want to do. Don't just say, well, I'm just coming to sign up. Yeah, <laughs> we have some people like that, right, property, right? Right, exactly. Well, well, kind of like, well, like? What, what, yeah, kind of habitat? what <laughs> habitat are you really wanting to address here? You know, are you wanting to really address for turkeys? Are you wanting to address for deer? Are you wanting to address for quail? I mean, what are you, what are you going for? And then we can really get down to the nit and gritty. And do those calls often lead into getting the regional biologist involved or the yeah. forester or, you know, whatever? Definitely, yeah. definitely. It, it, if there's something that we don't have as much expertise on, I'm going to talk to a Kevin Anderson, you know, the, the biologist, or I'm going to be talking to Jeremy Cochran, the, the district forester, and saying, hey, I need you to come out and take a look at this. This is a little bit outside of our expertise Mm -hmm. and then they'll come over and they'll help out for sure. Uh, sometimes we get some people that are really into pollinator habitat, you know, the, and so then I'll call Sarah Nizzi, she's the pollinator specialist, and say, hey, this person wants to do this. What do you suggest? So it's just, yeah, if you don't have the expertise, we can find the expertise. Yeah, awesome. yeah and that's one thing I will say is it's like, a lot of free resources uh, that are available, and mm -hmm. whether you choose to go with these programs or not, mm -hmm. uh, you can learn a lot and still apply. Mm -hmm. And and we're talking really some great best practices that have been studied mm -hmm. over and over again. So yeah, definitely. it's really to your advantage to to leverage them. Yeah, yeah. for sure, definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you being on the show, and yeah, um, it's, I've it's been great enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, good job, good job. <laughs> but right. Tim, until then. Be safe, Be safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.